Assalamu alaikum. This video is about the global pandemic, COVID-19, known mostly as coronavirus, and presented by students of grade 7 from Ahmadiyya International School. Not long ago, we were living in a common normalcy, but over the course of last seven months, the world has seen a simple microorganism cause havoc over the lives of 7.8 billion people. Even the most wealthiest countries have been caught there struggling to keep their countries from the spread of the COVID-19. The earth before the pandemic. As we all know, the earth was a polluted place. We were mostly living without a fear. We were able to go out without any safety masks or anything. And traveling wasn't restricted. We were able to travel around the world and even go to schools and colleges and also meet friends and all. Amid this pandemic, there has been a drastic change to the environment, when in such being the once large old on there is hiding itself day by day. This is a representation of the Earth now. In 2019, this very same hole on top of the Arctic Pole was about 16.4 million square kilometers. In that same year, scientists declared that humans have 11 years to prevent a chain of irreversible climate change. But in, in April 2020, NASA and NASA scientists have declared that this very same hole is now about 1 million square kilometers in size. But it doesn't mean that 11 years humans were given no increase. Although in 2019, scientists declared that with 95% con confidence, that humans have no longer than 7.8 million years remaining. But with this change, humans, scientists have increased the number with 5,100 5, years. Thank you. Science that the Earth is healing. COVID-19 has infected more than 858,000 people all over the world. And more than 42,000 people have died in this tragic pandemic. But there's also a bright side on COVID-19. Due to COVID-19 or coronavirus, the earth is healing. Many people have noticed the sky is bluer and there's less smoke in the sky. With absolutely limited movement of vehicles on the road, the roads are breathing in much more cleaner air with relatively safer levels of pollutants to deal with as compared to the time before lockdown. And also, birds are now flying together a lot frequently in the clear blue sky. People in Jalandhar, India can see Himalayas from the, the, their rooftops for the first time in decades. The lockdown has cleared air to the extent that people in Punjab could catch a sight of Himalayas from some of its cities. The Himalayan range is more than 100 meters away from Punjab. Since the COVID-19 lockdown, the earth has started to heal by itself. The earth has better air quality and the wildlife creatures are living peacefully. Why is the earth healing? After the COVID-19 lockdown was announced, the earth's pollution rate was decreased by a lot. The factories won't be running, so now that means they won't be releasing any harmful gases. The COVID-19 lockdown also leads to use of less vehicles. The wildlife is also seeing changes. Many forgotten animals have been spotted, such as rare species of faunas. Due to the COVID-19 lockdown, the animals have more spaces to be in. The world was shocked after seeing a deer walking around in town in Poland. The water qualities in rivers have also improved. The river Ganga was once known to have one of the most purest water in the world. But with people coming to the river, the river saw a dip in its quality. The Ganga Pollution Control Board affirmed that the water quality from the river has improved. So the real reason why the earth is healing is because of the COVID-19 lockdown. Can we maintain this healing process? Due to lockdown of many countries around the world, the earth has started healing. We have to be eco-friendly if we are helping the earth heal, but we should know more than that. For the first point, I would like to highlight using environmental friendly vehicles like bicycles. 
losing cars and motorcycles release a lot of harmful gases to the environment like carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and many more. The next point is recycling. When we recycle, we are decreasing the amount of waste which we are producing. A very good way of recycling is using plastic bottles and cans to make pen holders and spoon holders. Another way to go green is to plant trees. When we are planting trees, we are not only helping the earth, but also other organisms which are living on earth, including us. So it is our responsibility to help the earth heal instead of harming it. There are so many ways we can aid our environment during this current pandemic. Like for example, wearing reusable masks instead of disposable masks. In addition to this, you can support your local businesses and reduce your carbon footprint by buying local products. You can also avoid public interaction by using reusable items at home made out of metal, wood, etc. Assalamu alaikum. Today we're going to be talking about the negative side of the pandemic to the environment. Increased waste quarantine policies established in most countries have led the consumers to increase their demand for continuing shopping. Consequently, organic and inorganic waste have been generated by household have been increased. Medical waste is also on the rise. Hospitals in Wuhan and USA produce an average of 240 tons of waste per day during the outbreak. This is a huge increase compared to their average of fewer than 50 tons. Reduction in waste recycle. As a result of this pandemic, such countries such as USA have stopped recycling programs in some of their cities. Apart from the animals being illegally hunted and animals in the zoo starving, and due to animals not being monitored well, have led them to move to dangerous habitats while they are on food search. Thank you. COVID-19 and food security. Food security as defined by the United States Committee on World Food Security means that all people at all times have physical, social, and economic access to sufficient, safe, and nutritious food that meets their food preferences and dietary needs for an active and healthy life. In simple terms, food security is to have reliable access to a sufficient quantity of affordable, nutritious food. The coronavirus pandemic has sparked not only a health crisis but also an economic crisis which together pose a serious threat to food security, particularly to countries like Maldives where we depend on imported goods. Unlike the current times, our ancestors lived a self-sustained life. They grew their own crops and depend on native varieties which made up their diet. With time, our dependency on imported vegetables and fruits have left our food security in a vulnerable state. To prepare for the future, it is important that we change our food habits and include native staple food varieties such as taro, cassava, sweet potato and breadfruit. We should also increase the productivity of leafy vegetables and other nutritious vegetables that can be grown in Maldives. Thank you. Due to COVID-19, we cannot import any food from abroad. So now we have to produce our own food. What is the importance of buying local food? Locally grown food is a term which describes a food that was grown within a geographical region that could be considered local to you. Because all the borders have been closed and we cannot import any food from abroad, we have to produce our own food. The Maldives have experienced this situation during the Second World War. On this occasion, many people died due to hunger. The same scenario may occur if we are not well prepared. The Maldives have over 1,000 islands. We can produce foods in those islands. We can produce foods such as coconut, breadfruit and many more. At this point, we should prepare our own food and we should improve our agriculture. That's why it is important on buying local food.
Available environment friendly technologies for power production in Maldives, solar seed panels. One of the most serious environmental problems affecting tropical island is the environmentally damaging production of electricity. Solar panels are installed floating systems which are 5 to 10 percent more effective. They are a bit like boats which are floating systems that are anchored in the seabed and supply electricity to the island through an underwater cable. These solar systems are more environmentally friendly and cheaper than diesel generators. Also, they are very efficient in situations like COVID-19, where many people are under economic crisis as one platform can supply 25 houses with up to 50% cheaper energy. Right now in Maldives, this system is located off in resorts like Four Seasons, Hurabari, and in the island Badaravantu, which is an inhabited island. There are hopes for more local involvement in the future for these panels. Komara taught us that everything in the biosphere was connected to everything else. But now everything in the human society is connected to everyone else. And so the ocean and vast land masses of the planet no longer protect us from the negative impact of human behaviors and technologies. Perhaps at one time, the oceans protected the new world, the nuclear bomb ended that idea for all time. Now, a disease that may have jumped from animals to humans in food market in China has led to illness, death, and mass changes in every corner of the planet. That is what I mean when I say we are an interconnected world. Just as we see the same images and buy the same products, we have the same diseases. The novel virus that we have never seen before is easily transmitted through the same interconnected ecosystem. Thank you. How is pandemic related to biodiversity? Bats, civets, snakes have all been rounded up as potential suspects for the COVID-19 outbreak at some point. Major outbreaks of infectious diseases caused by pathogens jumping from animals to humans are associated with the increasing loss of natural habitats. Research suggests that as the habitats of various animal populations disappear, they become less available and results in diseases jump into other species. Outbreaks like Ebola and HIV also emerged from areas where forests among the biodiverse habitats of our planet were disappearing. We as humans are still very dependent on nature, so respect and protect our biodiversity. To eliminate these negative effects of this pandemic, first off, the environment has recovered a lot and it's still recovering. We must keep it that way. So, how can we eliminate these negative effects? use reusable materials. Due to this virus outbreak, we need to wear masks and gloves for safety measures. But some people wear surgical masks and gloves, and these are only used once since they're plastic. Some of these materials are mostly thrown away and are usually seen by the side of the roads or at the beach. So, to avoid that, we can use masks and gloves that are made out of cloth. This will reduce the amount of plastic we can use. We can also use metal water bottles or tote bags to reduce other daily used plastic materials. Plant more trees. This will increase the amount of oxygen we can use and it can also help our environment stay safe and green. And last but not least, use environment friendly vehicles such as bicycles or take walks rather than using motorcycles and cars because they produce unhealthy smoke which is not healthy for our environment. And remember, the earth is what we all have in common. We must keep it safe. What is coronavirus? It's an infectious disease caused by a newly discovered coronavirus. It's mostly spread through droplets of saliva or discharges from the nose, mainly in the form of coughs and sneezes. The symptoms observed till now has been mostly mild respiratory illness. However, older people and people with underlying medical problems face greater risks to this serious illness. Different reports and theories has pointed out a Wuhan seafood ma market from China as the origin. However, the exact source of the virus is yet to be confirmed, and some earlier cases of the virus appears to have no initial link to the market at all. In small time frame, it has spread to all the corners of the world. How dangerous COVID-19 is? Coronavirus could be about 10 times more deadly than seasonal flu. Coronavirus symptoms can vary widely. Some people have no symptoms at all. 
while others have sores if they have one chole need ventilators to breathe. This is a virus that has never been seen in humans, so absolutely no one is immune to it. That added the fact it spreads as easily from person to person as influenza and affects the upper respiratory system is what it makes so dangerous. Plus, there's no vaccine available for everyone yet. Although for most people, COVID-19 causes only mild illness, but sometimes it makes some people very ill. The risk of developing dangerous symptoms of virus may be increased in people who are older and have serious health problems. Hi there! So how can a virus that is known to exist in animals be transferred to humans? Though we do not know the exact cause of the major outbreak of coronavirus across the globe, it is believed that this virus has been transmitted to humans from an animal. And the vast majority of scientists who study this virus has also agreed to this. And how exactly do we know that this virus has a zoonotic animal origin? Well, the answer lies in the genetic material and the evolutionary history of the virus. Zoonotic diseases are an infectious disease that is transmitted between species from animals to humans or humans to animals. In the case of coronavirus, it first revolves in a primary host and then later jumps on to an intermediate host. Based on the information available to this day, the risk of animals spreading coronavirus to humans is considered to be low and rare. Thank you. How the virus spreads? When someone with coronavirus coughs or exhales, they release droplets of infected fluid. Most of these droplets fall on nearby surfaces and objects such as desks, tables and telephone. People could catch the virus by touching these contaminated surfaces and objects and touching their eyes, nose and mouth. For example, imagine you are going to a shop to buy some groceries and you are wearing gloves and masks. Suppose you went to buy some vegetables. But what you didn't know was that there were germs on the vegetables already. But you were wearing your gloves, so you'll be okay, right? Anyways, you go to the counter to pay, but then you get a text message. Now the germs have spread onto your phone, which you got from the vegetables to your gloves. You pay and you go outside, but before starting the cycle, you throw away the gloves. This should be fine, right? But by this time, you get a call, and obviously you will answer the phone, right? Now the germs on your hand, which you'll be carrying to your home, while riding the cycle, going upstairs, pressing the lift button, holding the doorknob, and also to your loved ones at home. An infected person can have contaminated hands, face, and clothes, and physical contact can pass the virus throughout to people close to that person. Things we can prevent COVID-19 from spreading. We can keep a physical distance when we're out, wash your hands using soap, or hand sanitizer to avoid getting any infection. Wear a mask going out or public places to protect yourself from the virus. After done using the mask, make sure you throw it away safely. Don't touch people when you go out, rather greet them without touching. WHO also recommended that it is better to stay home but if it's something that important that you have to go outside, make sure you follow the guidelines. How can the virus be treated? Currently, there is no specific antiviral treatment for COVID-19. Up to date, there are no specific vaccines or medicine. Treatments are under investigation and will be tested through clinical trials. Antibiotics cannot cure COVID-19 as COVID-19 is caused by a virus. Antibiotics should not be used as means of prevention or treatment of COVID-19. WHO does not recommend self-medication with any medicines, including antibiotics as a prevention or cure for this disease. If you feel sick, you should rest Drink plenty of fluid and eat nutritious food. Staying in a separate room from other family members and use a dedicated bathroom if possible. Clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces. Everyone should keep, a, keep and maintain a healthy lifestyle at home. Maintain a healthy diet, sleep well, Stay active and make social contact with loved ones 
through the phone or the internet. How important a proper planning is for the people living in an urban environment during a pandemic. Today, the pandemic has turned the world outside our doorsteps into a newly formed wilderness as modern cities weren't designed to cope with life during a pandemic. And the growth of cities does not help this situation. For each city is packed with people and vehicles. Pollution also causes health and environmental problems which only weakens people. So, having a proper plan for the people living in urban environments is very important. How to make our urban environment a healthy one? Urban environments play an essential role in shaping human health and well-being. By making greener and more compact cities with energy-efficient buildings, improving domestic industry, and municipal waste management. Reducing agricultural waste, incineration, forest fires, and certain agroforestry activities. Investing in energy efficient power generation. Providing universal access to clean, affordable fuels and technologies for cooking, heating, and lighting. Build safe and affordable public transport systems. And pedestrian and cycle friendly networks. Our health and that of our planet depends on how cities are designed. Urban life poses challenges that push us to rethink how we plan urban environments. The cities we want are cities designed for people, places where we can live well and be healthy. Today I'm going to talk about embodiment and mental health due to COVID-19. As you all know that a virus called COVID-19 is spread the whole world. Because of that, environment has changed so much. The first thing is the air pollution. Air pollution is getting more decreased in these days because people don't go outside as every country is in lockdown. And people don't use vehicles, calls and fuels. The second thing is the sea pollution, which is getting more increased these days because people are using masks, gloves, which goes onto the ocean. I prefer everyone not to throw masks and gloves onto the ocean. The second point is the mental health. Mental health is getting more worse these days because people are getting more stress, fear and anxiety because the virus is a very strong virus. To reduce this all things, you can listen to a music or read a book and always think positive, don't think negative. I hope you all enjoy my video and I hope you all got information about environment and mental health due to COVID-19. The importance of global cooperation during the pandemic. To contain the dangerous virus like COVID-19, it is necessary to follow instructions of WHO and the advice of doctors and medical experts. It is important that the instructions given by in charge authorities are followed by everyone globally because this pandemic cannot be solved by one person but all being together. WHO says helping each other, doing our part for the community responsibly can get us through this pandemic easily. Looking at the donations to our country, the Maldives, U.S. government extended a grant of USD $2 million as economic support. Also, the government of India sent a team of health experts and donates medicine required for the treatment of disease. In media briefing, WHO chief says all the leaders choose the path of cooperation and act now to end this pandemic. He also said for all our differences, we are one human race sharing the same planet. No country will be safe until we are all safe. Importance of investing in science for a pandemic like this are due to science we know what the novel coronavirus COVID-19 is. We know how to we know how it spreads through the human population. We know how to fight it, how to treat it, and how to minimize the death rate of it. Humankind is racing to find a vaccine and treatments that would allow for neutralizing the health impacts of the pandemic. The power of scientific knowledge to guide us through these difficult times is very important. This is the reason why it's important to invest in science. The investments in the science we make today will help protect humankind from the future pandemics by preparing us with knowledge and tools through research. Even now, scientists are 
working hard to find a good vaccine for COVID-19. For example, a biomedical company in the U.S. state of California is partnering with Duke and U.S. Medical School in Singapore and the Singapore government for a research on a vaccine for COVID-19. Is it possible to coexist in nature with other organisms and live in perfect harmony? The answer is yes. It is not that late now. We have to make sure that we are not polluting our environment, not cutting down trees, and stop buying goods that are made from animal skin or stop hunting animals. Remember, other animals have equal rights to live on earth like us. So live and let live. A big thank you to HPA and our healthcare professionals for their efforts working on the front line to keep us safe. I would also like to express our gratitude to the management of Ahmadiyya International School for giving us the opportunity to bring awareness and to do our part in this fight against the pandemic. And despite all the challenges, Ahmadiyya International School is keeping us in the loop, providing the education we need. Last but not least, we thank the Environment Ministry for providing the information for this project. Please do your part, stay home and stay safe.